Now this, this is dry cleaning solution. Active ingredient is perchloroethylene. Get stains out like a champ. Like a champ when, believe you me. Gonna be hard getting that stuff down his throat. Want me to get a funnel? A funnel? Yeah! That's a killer idea! So you remember where they are now, do you? Candy fish. Ah, that does it, when You know I don't like sweet. Oh, the candy dish! That's right! That's where I left my keys. Should have said something earlier, when You see what I always made you drink? <laughs> now that's my type of guy. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I am Socio Psycho and this is Mob Reviews and today we're going to take a look at Alpha Protocol. This was created by Obsidian Entertainment, available for PC. Now it is a modern-esque spy, third-person style, stealth combat availability game with a heavy and rich choice story element tied into the game. Is it any good? Is it any bad? And we will find out. And we will start by going into the options menu. When we go to the options menu, it's split up little ways. You have subtitles, which is always nice. Vibration and sensitivity. Now the thing that is a slight issue here is the sensitivity. I would have really liked a down scope sensitivity as well as the basic sensitivity. Now the difference is your basic sensitivity is when you scroll your mouse left to right, how fast the camera changes position. That's not an issue. The issue is the level of speed that it goes when you have a scope targeted. Now there is a sort of focused aim mechanic in the game when you point down range, the target snares in and the more focused your crosshairs are, the more damage it's going to do. When you upgrade your ability and your weapons, that will happen faster. But moving left and right may not be a huge issue with your standard of weapons, but it does come down to a severe issue when you talk about using turrets, which are very few and far in between, and sniper rifles. The sensitivity in the aim mechanic is just insane, if not annoying or unplayable almost. So it makes the sections or availabilities to areas where it should be more entertaining, picking off enemies with a sniper rifle or using a turret gun, instead of it being enjoyable, it just becomes hectic and annoying. Now when we go into audio, it's good to have all the audio settings split up on different sliders. This is very important. Music in the game is done very well and it helps propel an atmosphere and an environmental suspense throughout the game. The sound effects of either the enemy opponents, the environment, or the weapons are done very well and the dialogue is done in a professional manner as I'll let you hear once we begin talking about the story. In video, you have motion blur, which I always decide to turn off. Gamma, which is nice. You have plenty of options, whether it comes to the level of graphical capability of a game, plenty of screen resolutions, which is definitely appreciated. Depth of field and motion blur tied together can make the screen very blurry and very annoying. And I don't exactly know what they were trying to go for. For me, it's simple, just turn it off and you don't have any issues, so there's no problems in that regard. Performance-wise, the game has been running at 60 frames per second with no tearing, clipping, or crashing. I have not had any performance problems while playing the game, and that's definitely nice. The only real issue I have is the fact that there is no field of view slider in here. And when it comes to having a field of view slider in a third person game, the availability just to either change how much you can see on screen obviously, or even I'd be satisfied with a scroll out, just a little bit more backspace from the character as the camera is tied directly onto his butt. So it's just a little bit annoying that you can't change your preference in that regard. It's not game breaking, but it is slightly inconvenient. What is nice though is when we go into controls, you have the availability for Xbox controller if you want that. The controls of the game and managing it all is very simplistic. And when you come to rebinding the keys, I've had no issues. They're all easily rebindable with no problems whatsoever. So that's definitely appreciated. There are some minor issues though, which we'll get into when it comes to key mapping. 
for not every control that you use in a game is rebindable. So some controls are hardwired and they're not the most optimal. Is it game breaking? No, not necessarily because you don't use them in every motion you do. They are specific task oriented keybinds, but the fact is they could have been done better and you can't change that because it's been hardwired. So when we come out here, we're going to show you the availability you have when you start a new game. You start off with the very simplistic options of your difficulty choice, and you have a agent history style of gameplay. The soldier, field agent, and tech specialist are predetermined skill sets for you to follow along with, where freelancer is more create your own. So if you're not sure what you're doing, it has the availability to set you on a trail, and that's nice because for people who may not want to dive into the customizational option, you don't have to worry about it. But at the same time, if you're looking to sort of freelance, you have that availability with no problem. As you can see, the tech specialist has points already in some of these abilities, which pertains to his style of play. At the bottom, you do have recruit and veteran. Veteran will unlock once you have completed recruit. This is a very nice mechanic because veteran gives you a bonus of points as well as increase in new conversational options to pick in your dialogue choices throughout the game just as recruit has a few here and there veteran has more and it rewards you as a play plus it says congratulations you played through on recruit and now we're going to reward you with a little bit more of what you deserve due to your hard work so it's nice to have that so first we're going to talk about the story in the game. The story is very simplistic. You are part of a program called Alpha Protocol. Alpha Protocol is a top secret governmental program made for deniability during missions which are too controversial or whatnot. So should the agents involved be found out or be expendable or some variation to cover their tracks, the government can successfully have plausible deniability that the program existed and the people were actually working for the government and they're classified as traitors or whatnot. There's a conspiracy going around the world that is fueling a cold war and going to start a World War III. It is a spy style game, a modern James Bond with your gadgets and coolness without any of your corny puns or ridiculous overtunes. You go from lo different locations in the world, Rome, Moscow, Taipei, and you find out pieces of a puzzle and there are missions and side missions. And as you progress forward, you find out more and more about what's happening and what's going on and your character gets stronger and you increase in your abilities and points. The decisions that you make though during this play, the choices that you, whether it be, do I kill these people? Do I sneak past these people? How do I interact with this person versus how I interact with that person? All play a role in how the environment shapes around you. And the environment is shaped around you during the conversations. Playing through one time and having everybody being pissed off at you isn't going to wield the same results as if you're friendly or outgoing. How you manage to handle and interact with the world. Do you go through and try killing every single person everywhere and not care about anything else or any information and just going straight for the goal? Or do you try to ghost everything, try to find every piece of information you can, be as silent and sneaky as possible because the end result of the game will be different. There are five or six, maybe more different style endings to the game. It all ends roughly the same, but the context of how it ends is different based upon your gameplay, as well as some punches or kicks in there that you may not be expecting. So it does have this element of what you do matters, and that's what's important. You never feel like, oh, well, my actions didn't have any weight, or what am I doing here? Because it doesn't matter. Everything is carefully tied together to where it does have an impact in the world. This all ties in as well as a voice acting. If a voice acting wasn't done in a professional manner, then it wouldn't be the same. All the voice acting is done in a highly professional manner, and I'll let you hear that for yourself now. A leading arms trafficker suspected of supplying terrorist organization Al Samad was captured by coalition forces earlier this week. Mohammed Omar bin Nasri, based in a remote part of Saudi Arabia, was in possession of over $100 million worth of small arms, ammunition, missiles, and vehicles. 
His extradition to the United States is currently being worked out with the Saudi government. So what do you recommend? They probably have as much trouble finding their way around as you do. So follow power lines or work lights when you can. Might guide you to where they've got their stockpiles. Got it. If they use those same routes to move around, shouldn't be too hard to pick them off either. I'll upload what maps I have to your PDA. They probably keep the weapons in the bottom of the base in case they, uh, well, explode. Used in the past. If you can sneak in and plant a listening device, we may be able to track flight Shahid is using to move through Saudi Arabia. And the third lead? We've got the coordinates of an al Samad detention camp, also used as a stockpile for weapons. We suspect the missiles may be stored there. Then why are we playing around? Why not send in the troops and storm the place? Kill me. Elbeck uses you, but you do not see their influence. You will. Trust me in this. I'll take that PDA of yours. That contact list on it should prove handy. Take it. We'll only implicate your country. Proof of the corruption at the heart of yeah, the country. Yeah, that's fascinating. Now, did you ever play make-believe when you were a kid what? pretend you could fly? Where are you taking me? Now, you get to be the plane <laughs> chicken. <laughs> So as you can see, everything goes and connects just right in a proper order. Now when it comes to the character build itself, when it comes to how you do place down points and how this really affects your style of gameplay. Do you go more stealth versus assault rifles or other weapons? If you're focused more on stealth, then you don't need to pump out so much in weapons because that's not your priority. Your priority is not fighting. There are bosses, so you will need some even martial arts or some variation of weapon skills but you don't need to max it out because your goals are to stealth and maybe tactical aptitude in not being seen. So it will really play a huge role in how you interact with the world on that front. As there are abilities, active and passive, which you gain as you place ability points as you level up into the different categories. In stealth, in a higher level, you'll have a easier time evading a camera or the sight range of guards and this also ties into the gear the type of gear you wear and the enhancements on the gear do play a role in your ability to either be seen or get through technical aptitudes it does all play a role in your game style so if you're going for more of a tank style burst through shooting or i'm not going to be seen your gear and your abilities play tandem hand in hand, which really affect how you play. So you can play the game two, three times and have a different feel each time through it. As you level up, you'll gain ability points and you'll spend these ability points. It's pretty simplistic in that regard. When it comes down to the individual weapons, as I said, it is a little difficult. It's not as simple as a first person shooter saying, well, look how it recoils and look how it feels and look how it sounds. Yes, there is some of that, but there is a lot more depth when it comes to the weapons in regards. You have the pistols, but at the same time, it doesn't just come down to one pistol. When we go to the clearinghouse, the sort of black market-esque as you progress through the game and you gain money as you find it throughout the different missions, you'll notice that there are plenty of different handguns. And the different handguns, the better the style, the more they'll increase in their stats, and you can customize them, that's the key. They each have customizable accessories added to them, which will give them a bonus in different areas. So when you calculate, well, what weapon do I have? And what upgrades do I have to increase my damage or accuracy or my recoil, stability, how much ammunition, how much extra ammunition pouches do I have on my armor? Do I have armor reduction? Do I have silence? or agility style to avoid detection on my armor. The way that you build your gear does play a role in how your weapons feel and how they sound, as well as ammunition, as the guns have different styles of ammunition, some armor piercing, some bleeding, and regular bullets. But the base weapons of how they feel is good. It sounds good, it handles good. The weapons feel serious. It's not like I'm shooting a toy gun. It feels like it has enough recoil and you can upgrade the abilities to get more of a handle on the recoil and faster aim down sight time 
as well as everything else we've gone over. So the customizational options in the game for the different weapons matter a lot. They really do, not just in the way the guns look, because yeah, it may look cool or it may look nice or whatnot, but the increase and enhancements that you feel as you progress forward. The first gun you get for the first mission versus one of the guns you have on the last mission is going to be radically different in its weight and power due to the upgrades you have, and that's what matters. Yes, you may customize your gun for a different set or layout, but at the end, it's going to be more of what you want. It's going to be powerful, it's gonna have that kick, it's gonna have that stomping power, or the certain characteristics you're looking for, whether it be range or just breaching with a shotgun. And the same element goes to with the body armor. Different body armor will have sound dampening, which is the most important. You can have night operations armor, which is an increase to sound dampening, so you're more stealth. Or if you go with a heavy set armor, which is going to have less sound quality to it, or it's gonna have more pouches in the armor, so you can put accessories, such as increasing how much endurance you have, or increasing the damage reduction you have, so the different armors do play a serious role when it comes into how you actually want to play and handle through the game. And when it comes to your gadgets, incendiary grenades, explosive grenades, shock trap grenades, remote grenades, first aid kits, the nice thing about this is the fact that you can actually plant grenades down. Now, unfortunately, once you plant them down, you don't have the availability to pick them back up should they not be triggered or should you want to reclaim them. So. If you're going into an area and you know or you think someone might be coming up behind you, you can safeguard yourself by placing a trap down, the enemy will trigger it and they should die. So there is a valability whether you want to create a grenade down or maybe just a shock charge because you don't have to go through the game and be a marauding psychopath who is just killing everybody in your way. You have the availability to either completely ghost, to completely go on a bloodbath rampage, or just be merciful. You can use tranquilizers and EMP grenades, flashbangs, and passive ways to knock people out. You can go martial arts and fight people in that sense. So there is an availability to play in a style that you want, and the important thing is that it doesn't penalize you for playing with style that you want. If you enjoy playing stealth and assassinating everybody with a knife from melee point, you're not going to get an increase in your experience whether you kill somebody or you knock somebody out. It doesn't play high horse commander and say, oh, that's wrong, this is right. And I respect it for that because it says play as you want, build your gear around that style and enjoy. And whether you do melee or you do range, they each have their own difficulty. Range is attempting not to get swarmed and melee is patience and timing. So martial arts is another area where the as you increase in your ability, the damage that you deal and the damage you take is minimized and increased. It really does play a role and the more points you put in, you can see and feel as this is progressing as well as the active ability such as fury, which increases your damage. It's like a berserk mode. There are certain elements depending on how you want to play as there is specializations as well. You can't have every single ability and every single rank maxed out, but as you increase, you get to choose the specialization abilities, whether it be sabotage and you're making the breaking and entering of locks, electronic bypasses, and hacking attempts easier, or you're going with technical, which is allows armor customization or weapon customization, which increases the stability of your items. There are different characteristics to each of these abilities which really help play a role and make the individual choices have more meaning. Even toughness has a hard to kill, which if you die, you immediately cling to life and you have sort of a second chance to come back with a very low percent of health and health does not replenish. You have a armor condition which does replenish if you're out of combat, but armor can be chipped away on harder difficulties very easily. So having high armor and low health is not a guaranteed win. Stimulate yourself with a health pack and get back your health or find med kits around the different missions. But having low health and running around with high armor is not a way or guarantee. And a hard to kill gives you just that slight chance 
to get back into it or give you that extra second you needed to win that battle without making the game feel unbalanced or unfair in any regard. The difficulty does scale fairly and I've never found there to be an abuse of a system whether it comes down to the abilities in the game versus the enemy and the difficulties and the situations you find yourself in. Now one more thing to talk about as it is a main play style of the game is the technical aptitude area. You have lockpicking, hacking, and electronic bypass mini games throughout the game. Now these are not mandatory and that's very important. The game has a very good, well done, integrated tutorial in the beginning of the game which familiarizes you and as you progress forward through the game, they start you off easy and they get slightly harder and then whether your abilities and your gear make them easier or not, there is room for them to be fast and easy or difficult and overwhelming. But they are not something that are put in your way if you completely despise them or hate them. Yes, you may find one or two occasionally, not often, tied to a main story which you need to collect or get through in order to reach a goal. But because there are so few which are tied into the actual story element of the game, you can simply use a EMP charge to electrify the item and it will open the door for you. Of course, the grenade will be used up in the process. So it's a trade-off. You are not forced to have to use or open every single lock you see or bypass every computer screen or hack some variation. They do offer bonuses, more money, more intel, more files, collectible information, but it's not mandatory and that's what's important. And you have a very easy way of skipping past it if you enjoy them or don't enjoy them. If you get stuck on one and you have a grenade, just use the grenade. The lock picking is very simplistic. On the side you have a panel when it lights up you just click it and it's putting the pivot in the correct slot. It's not hard at all. The difficulty does come from the time element and the finesse because you don't want to be too fast and mess up and not get it on the line. Overall, it's fairly simplistic in its mechanics. Now yes, they do increase in the number that you have to line up and the time scale that you have to do it on as the game increases and the difficulty increases depending on different variables. The electric bypass, such as messing with certain wires, is the same aspect. It's not difficult and it is a nice little diversion or break as there are these three different categories which rotate around so you're not just doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. It has a variation and that's definitely nice. It just comes down to a simple lineup follow the path and click on the correct line in order. As the level of difficulty increases, the number will increase and the complexity of the lines will increase, but they're all manageable depending on the gear and the abilities you take into combat. The only one that I do not like is the hacking attempts. The hacking attempts is when you log into a computer and you have to line up the code data with the code line in the computer screen. It has a running clock on the top and a standard reset on the bottom, which when it resets, the code line moves to another location. Now, in its base design, yeah, it's good. In what and how the mechanic works, it's done pretty well. The unfortunate part of it is the fact that they hardwired the mouse and keyboard in order to move both of the controls. So you use your WASD to move the left code to line it up and find the correct halfway and click on it and set it in sync, but for the right one it's your mouse. The mouse doesn't move as fast as the keyboard and it is very hard at times and difficult or tricky to get it perfectly lined up. They should have just hardwired the arrow keys to that side. It would have been a lot easier. Now you're thinking, well, what does it matter? And if you don't enjoy or you want to bypass this style with just grenades or not doing it at all, that's perfectly fine. But the problem comes from when you're trying to be stealthy in some regard and you make it 70% through the base, you get to a hacking attempt, and the only reason you fail it, the only reason you mess it up is because of a mouse sensitivity in trying to line up the code correctly onto the other code is so annoyingly touchy and just frustrating that it takes you X amount of time or you miss your window with some variation and now the system has been alerted and everybody in base is alerted and your ghost quality of the game is now shot. 
it has a real suck environment to it. They should have done that a lot better, and that's probably one of my biggest complaints about the game. Now one other quick area to talk about is the perk system itself. As you progress forward through the game, you have different perks that you have the availability to gain by simply experience of what you do in the game. And this is nice, because if you invade 75 enemies, movement noise is minus 20%. Or if you kill certain enemies in a certain fashion, or if you unlock computers, a certain amount of computers, or survive different missions in certain fashions, or use weapons in a certain way, get headshots, you get different perks, which increase your overall capability. So on top of everything else, now you have a perk system as well, which rewards you for the style that you're playing. So not only are you building a character that you want to play in a certain style, but now you are also getting rewarded for playing in that style or approaching conversations in a certain style. This level of reward upon your actions, no matter what they are, is definitely what is beautiful about the game. Because it says, I don't care how you play the game, you're going to get treated fairly. And whatever choices you make in a game are your choices. And so they will have some sort of reaction. And so it's definitely nice that they have this. It really adds that sweet spot onto the style of play, making the customization of your character really up to your character. Which brings us to the combat element in the game. How is the combat actually done? Because you have combat and you have stealth, and both of them are fairly accurate. The combat is well done. The weapons and recoil and how you feel as we went over into the customization, yes, you do customize your weapon into a fashion that you want, but the effects and the satisfaction that you get from planning out an attack, whether you're placing down mines or you're luring enemies a certain way or you're sneaking past them, they are all fairly balanced in how you interact with the world. Do you go through and shoot up a whole courtyard of enemies? Because if you do, the enemy will react to you. They will take cover. They will run to each other's aids. More will come from different areas and help out. It's not like a, oh, I see an enemy, one enemy in a room of five. I'm going to take out that one enemy very noisily. Now the other four aren't even alerted. Or the other four aren't worried or shooting me at me and That's not doing anything. There is a definite realization of if you are not careful in what you do and how you approach a situation, you can easily die. If you go forward and think that without well, understanding anything of the enemy location or the safety to hide behind some object, and you just start shooting randomly, the enemy will flank you, the enemy will hit you from different areas, and depending on the difficulty of the gameplay style that you have it set on, you will die fairly fast. There have been times where I've been flushed out because the enemy does use grenades rather fast, and I think it's one guy, he throws a grenade at me, so I move location to get better angle at hitting him, and then all of a sudden now there's two guys behind me, or the one guy is charging towards me, and there's different variations. If a guy with a shotgun charges towards me and then gets close enough to actually engage me in melee combat and then shoots me in the face with a shotgun, you have to be careful of how you engage in certain combat. This is also very important to note that if you are playing in a stealth category, the fact is that you have the ability to wait and sneak past the enemies with no issue whatsoever. There may be a few missions where it's mandatory for you to kill a few people, but other than that, you can entirely stealth everything in the game with no problem. You can ghost entire missions, never set off an alarm or anything else. And there's a certain quality of satisfaction. I find the stealth element in the game to actually be very enriching. The combat can be challenging in different effects, and the enemies do change up as you get increased capabilities as well. So the enemies do level sort of with you. When you fight an enemy at a harder difficulty and a higher level, he'll have more armor, his damage will be increased, and you can find yourself dying fairly fast if you don't approach the situation correctly. Where in a stealth category, it's more about being patient, being aware, and taking the opportunities you have to sneak through and be unseen or unheard. So either way, they definitely have an element of suspense 
We have to try. It's not one or the other. It's not, oh, well, I can either just blast my way through and be super easy, or I can just sneak my way through and be super easy. They both have elements which go in tandem and really give a character a challenging level. And I think this is allowed because of the in-depth customizational options. Because they allow such an in-depth customizational option to be there, they just scale the enemy difficulty to a fair but high point at times, depending on your difficulty, of course, where it balances out rather well. And the level design is done very well. The different maps, you never feel like you're playing the same mission again. They all look different. The different zones, different countries, the different atmospheres. Yes, they may be linear in motion. You're not going to have an open world and it's not gonna be like, well, which way do I go, left or right? And it meets 40 yards later somewhere else. It's not a drop you into a base and you take out the base from six different floors and everything else. It's very linear, it's absolutely linear, but it has a certain element and quality that every mission looks different. The enemies that you face have different characteristics, have different either increased armor or different weapons or some variation that the linearness of a game is not that daunting or problematic. The satisfaction that you can have sneaking through the enemies or the satisfaction you can have blasting your way through makes the tied with the new aesthetics every map and the different characteristics make the fact that it's linear not an issue at all. So at the end of the day, when it all boils down to it, the combat is done very well, has a great fluidity tied into the great customizational options that you have, which ties into the perks that you get for customizing your characters you want, so you get rewarded upon being allowed to play the way you want to play, which is just beautiful. It continuously gives you new aesthetics. It has a very enrich, consequential story environment. What you do does matter. How you interact people will affect how the game interacts with you and how you are treated, how people look at you. If you're an asshole to one person earlier in the game, that may come back to bite you in the butt later on. It has a sort of remembrance of your actions. And this all ties up to the end of the game, which does tell a slightly different victory screen based off of the choices that you made and the playstyle that you end up wanting to go with. You are a super spy, and you will have the availability to really play like one and be rewarded for playing like one. It has been a very enjoyable experience, and my time has been well spent. I can easily recommend this game. I never felt like my time was wasted or I was disrespected in any regard during my playthrough. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this has been of help to you for I have been Social Psycho, and this has been Mob Reviews, and I'll see you next time.